So we will continue our discussion on coin change problem. Some more insights into DP and brute force. So we said uh, if you look at the generalized coin change problem with denominations d1 to dk and we observed that uh, with this being the notation d max is equal to max of d1 comma dk we saw that the size of uh, the recursion tree so that is uh, ternary tree in this case for the example it was ternary tree in this case it becomes uh, kre tree the size of the kre tree is at least k to the power x by d max so it is a kre tree so which means uh, at this level you see k power 0 nodes then k power 1 nodes in the next level you see k square like that it goes and we were interested in knowing uh, where do we see the first zero and the first zero is seen at the level x by d max in that level you will see that there will be x by d max number of nodes and then you start seeing zero and we go all the way up to x minus one so the zeros are, uh, zeros are scattered between this level and uh, level x minus 1 but this itself gives us that there are uh, exponential number of nodes and in turn exponential number of computations are happening and so the time complexity of uh, brute force algorithm is at least uh, this much and uh, you can even do k power 0 plus k power 1 so on up to this sum simplify but this will still act as a good lower bound fine and this can be seen through a recurrence relation as well so we want to give a change for x so the time complexity of our brute force algorithm or recursive algorithm is denoted using this notation t of x this depends on what this depends on uh, t of uh, x minus 1 sub problem in this case it is x minus uh, d1 or it depends on uh, x minus uh, d2 and so on up to it depends on uh, x minus uh, dk and to get to each of them you do subtraction right uh, that is some uh, constant effort so we subtract and then get to this sub problem subtract and then we get to this sub problem and, and so on so we see that t of x is uh, this one so for the example we discussed t of x is equal to t of uh, x minus 1 plus t of x minus 3 plus t of uh, x minus 4 plus uh, order 1 so this can be seen from two ways one for getting into these sub problems and another one to com combine the solution of uh, these three to get solution to this and how are we combining uh, these solutions we are taking the solution of this and then we say 1 plus this 1 plus this 1 plus this and take the minimum out of that that is also constant effort so we were saying uh, c of uh, x is uh, min of uh, 1 plus this 1 plus this 1 plus this and uh, take min out of this right uh, 1 plus c of uh, x minus 1 so 1 plus c of x minus 3 and 1 plus c of x minus 4 and this one is also a constant effort so this order 1 captures this now solution to this would be solution to this is precisely the time complexity of uh, our brute force algorithm fine but one can attempt this in uh, two ways right uh, one can say t of x you see that uh, everywhere it is x minus 1 which means that would give you an upper bound 
so 3 times t of x minus 1 plus order 1 or everywhere it is x minus 4 then t of x is equal to at least 3 times t of x minus 4 plus order 1. Now instead of solving this I am trying to find a good lower bound and a good upper bound for this and this one reaches uh, t of 0 subproblem quickly compared to other two subproblems. Let us assume everywhere it is x minus 4 which means this will lower bound the time complexity. This will take maximum iterations to reach t of 0. All this will reach before that. But if you replace this also x minus 1, this also with uh, x minus 1, then what we get is only an upper bound. Now you can see that uh, this and this will give you, uh, so this tells you order of uh, 3 power uh, x, this tells you omega of uh, 3 power uh, x by 4. Okay, so now you can see that uh, solution to this recurrence is packed between uh, these two complexities and both are exponential in the input value x, which means the time complexity of uh, brute force run in uh, the underlying algorithm. The underlying algorithm runs in exponential in input size. Fine, so this is true with uh, almost all uh, brute force case uh, study. And so one has to uh, look at the underlying recurrence through that also one can calculate or a quick estimate look at the underlying tree and see where exactly the first zero starts and until that part we will see a complete tree of some specific uh, order. It could be ternary tree, KRE tree and so on and pay attention to that and uh, estimate what would be the complexity. And just because you focus on micro level analysis, you focus on overlapping subproblem, the exponential tree becomes a polynomial tree and the algorithm runs in, uh, the dynamic programming based solution runs in uh, polynomial time. See this also exploits optimal substructure. For example, when we look at uh, brute force, we said uh, we take this uh, problem, yes we are also exploiting optimal substructure here, but more than that, it is the overlapping subproblem that brings the exponential uh, time algorithm to a polynomial time algorithm. So, which is why dynamic programming based solutions are uh, quite powerful and the most sought after paradigm or the solution in practice. So, the moment greedy fails, if greedy gives you it is straightforward and um, the algorithm or the strategy is kind of intuitive. The moment greedy fails, uh, the next natural case study is uh, dynamic programming. Check whether it satisfies overlapping subproblem. If it satisfies overlapping subproblem, whether it falls into brute force or DP, that we have to see. For that, pay attention to overlapping subproblem. If that is the case, then uh, look for uh, DP based solution. Let's look at Fibonacci series or nth Fibonacci number. So we want to compute uh, Fib of n. This depends on uh, Fib of uh, n minus 1 and uh, Fib of n minus 2. Fine. So something like we want to compute uh, say fib of uh, 5 it depends on uh, fib of 4 and fib of 3 then again this depends on uh, fib of 3 and fib of 2 so this depends on uh, fib of 2 and fib of 1 and further this becomes uh, fib of uh, 1 and uh, fib of 2, this becomes uh, fib of uh, 1 and fib of 0. 
So is the case uh, here. And we know that the base values are uh, f of 0 and uh, f of 1 which is 1 over here. So fib of 0, fib of uh, 1 are basically 1. Now in the computation of nth Fibonacci number we are not optimizing anything. There is no optimization involved but you see that uh, there is a clear uh, overlapping subproblem. So what you compute as part of this subtree is same as uh, what you compute as part of the entire subtree. Similarly what is being computed over here is same as uh, what is being computed as part of this subtree. So here is a problem and no optimization involved. It just satisfies uh, overlapping subproblems. And there is no optimization involved, so it doesn't have uh, optimal substructure property. So there are problems for which we see only this is taking place, but the other property is not. Because of this, if you look at uh, the recurrence relation, which finds uh, this, so it is t of n minus 1 plus t of uh, n minus 2 and plus some constant effort. Now this is what this tree is telling. To find nth Fibonacci number, you compute n minus 1th Fibonacci number and n minus 2nd Fibonacci number and to get to recursive uh, subproblem, uh, you need this and uh, we also add both of them and uh, that's so because fib of n is fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. So that addition cost is also taken care of. Now the solution to this one, uh, if you solve uh, using the technique we just now suggested, and if both are n minus 1, this will give us 2 times n minus 1. And if both are uh, n minus 2, this will give us 2 times uh, n minus 2. So this tells you that uh, t of n is omega of 2 power uh, n by 2. This one is 2 power n by 2. This one is uh, order of uh, 2 power n. But you maintain one table or a one dimensional array and in that uh, f of uh, 0 and f of 1 both are 1 1 and uh, to compute f of 2 we need these two values add them so you say 2 and to compute uh, f of 3 we need uh, these two values add them we get this then we add these two to get this and so on and then just one linear scan we can update the entire uh, table which means uh, if we exploit overlapping subproblem we can achieve this in uh, order uh, n time which means computation of uh, nth Fibonacci number so computing fn using uh, overlapping subproperty incurs order n time so this is a dynamic programming based solution and because it exploits overlapping uh, subproblem property and dynamic programming based solution computes nth Fibonacci number in poly in uh, input value namely n whereas uh, this one a recursive solution following brute force approach without exploiting overlapping subproblem property takes uh, 2 power n by 2 which is exponential in input value n. There are many such uh, problems, here is one case study. So another case study on the similar line is uh, computation of C of n comma r or n c r. So this says uh, out of uh, n objects choose uh, r objects, right? And this one is same as uh, you can look at it this way, you fix one person 
and that person can be there in the solution or not which means if that person is going to be there then from n minus 1 choose r minus 1 if he is not going to be there then from n minus 1 we have to choose r because we need r of them so so you have identified one person and he is part of the solution which means you have to pick remaining from this remaining so n minus 1 choose r minus 1 and he is not going to be there in the solution so we have to pick r and from the remaining which is n minus 1 and something like say 5c3 what it says is it is uh, 4c2 plus uh, 4c3 now again this one is 4c3 is uh, 3c3 3c2 and this one is uh, 3c2 and uh, 3c1 fine so like that it goes <clears throat> so when you have uh, nc1 or ncn uh, we return uh, 1 and this would be our uh, base case base case is uh, nc1 or ncn for both of them uh, return 1 otherwise keep doing the recursion so now you see that uh, this subtree and this subtree they have overlapping uh, substructure if you simply follow brute force approach then we will say t of uh, n comma r is t of n minus 1 comma r minus 1 plus t of uh, n minus 1 comma r some constant time for uh, addition so this is what our brute force recurrence relation will tell us and this will give us uh, exponential in the input size namely n and r but if we exploit this overlapping sub problem by computing each of them exactly once we see that we incur uh, polynomial effort again we are not uh, optimizing anything so this is a candidate for uh, overlapping sub problem so it satisfies overlapping sub problem which means computing ncr plus overlapping sub problem so this shows that computing ncr plus overlapping sub problem property gives polytime algorithm so there are and which means dynamic programming based uh, solution so we compute the uh, sub problem exactly once and reuse them wherever it appears so we see a drastic reduction in uh, complexity so optimization problem satisfying these two as a dp solution and uh, there are non optimization problems like uh, computing nth fibonacci number and this and follows just overlapping sub problem not this okay, now interesting question is are there problems which just satisfy optimal substructure property and uh, no overlapping sub problem that's an interesting question to think about it and can uh, dp based uh, solution uh, will help us or because it is not having overlapping sub problem is dp based solution and uh, brute force approach are they one and the same is dp based solution uh, and some other paradigm maybe uh, divide and conquer and are they one and the same okay that's an interesting question to think about it